Hello there. I'm Lakeland Sports Information Director Adam Glotchik, and after a summer break and getting organized this fall, we are back with another edition of the Muskies Coaches Corner. Unfortunately, COVID is still around, so for the time being, we'll have to continue to do these by virtual meeting, um, unfortunately. But, uh, but for today, we'd like to introduce folks to Shannon Gillespie. He's the new head coach of the Lakeland women's wrestling team. Coach Gillespie, thanks for joining us and welcome to Lakeland. Well, it's a pleasure to be here and I'm excited for the things to come for the women's wrestling program. I know this is the third year of the program. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's still the beginning of women's wrestling at this school and in college. Generally speaking, there are about 85 or so women's collegiate wrestling teams and we're happy to be a part of that group. Yeah. So, and our uh, first question for you is, and we were talking about it a little here just before we started this, um, you've been on the job for a couple weeks. What have your first few weeks been like uh, at Lakeland? So, like you mentioned, I started, I think, on, was it September 21? I think that was my first day. And so, by and large, I've just been kind of understanding the culture and understanding new systems and learning the new systems, learning the new athletes that are on a team, kind of bonding with them. We've had several meetings just to get to know each other a little bit better. And next Monday or October 12th, that will be our first day of actual training. And so the ladies are excited about that. I'm excited about that. And we're looking forward to having a great year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you have many years and a wide scope of experience in the sport of wrestling, more than 30 years as a competitor and coach. Um, and you've been involved in the sport at a number of levels. Um, what appealed to you about the Lakeland position? Well, I, I got my first, I guess, break, if you will, with uh, coaching at the collegiate level and international level on the women's side about okay. 2004, and that was at the United States Olympic Education Center. And to be certain, it's challenging to become a head coach at the collegiate level for men or women. And so for me, I felt like, uh, is there really a difference between being a head coach for the men and for the women? Because a lot of men's coaches shy away from coaching the women. And I always felt like, well, I had the opportunity. Why shouldn't the women have the same opportunity? So what brings me to Lakeland is a little bit of what you talked about, my background and experience on the women's side. And I live two hours from here in Chicago. And right now, yep. You know, part of my family, my wife and my second daughter, Kayla, and my wife's name is Emily. They're in Chicago and I'm two hours away uh, up here at, in uh, Lakeland University. So some of it is proximity. And the other side is I really did want to give back to the sport on the women's side because I feel like uh, they deserve the same opportunities that the men deserve. Sure. Um, do you have any specific goals in mind for the Lakeland program at the beginning of your tenure, um, whether goals being on the mat, um, off the mat, um, just the progress, things you'd like to see with the team or with, with the members of your team? So the last portion of your question is what I want to focus on this first, I'd say, year and a half to two years, maybe up to three years, because at the moment, and this is could be prevalence for some of the uh, teams that are on the women's side right now, we're actually trying to build our team in terms of participants. Right now, I think we have six or seven uh, student athletes. One of them is a graduate assistant and she'll be competing as well. So we would like to mm -hmm. double and triple and even quadruple those numbers over the next four years. So Maddie Rothaschel is the graduate assistant and her mm -hmm. and I spend a lot of time these last, let's say week or so, basically hitting the recruiting trail and trying to explain to everybody there is a program at Lakeland University. It's a yep. women's program and we're trying to get people to buy into, you know, learning the name, learning the location, and then eventually coming to school and then wrestling here. Yep. Um, some of your experience in the past, you worked at the U.S. Olympic Education Center um, and were part of the U.S. national team staff for eight years, I believe. Um, Correct. Can you tell us a little bit more about that experience? So, we called it for short, we called it the USOEC, but that does stand for United States Olympic Education Center. So that was a, a kind of a combination of sorts. So it was an international program, but it was also a collegiate program, but it was also a high school program. So that means we had age ranges from 15 on the low end all the way to 24. Because it was an Olympic development program, we could have high school athletes be in that program. And in that case, 
I had to go to probate court and I became their legal guardian. So much of that program was designed to get the student athletes on the Olympic team. So you would start with events like the Cadet Pan Am and the Cadet World Championships and the Junior World Championships and the Senior World Championships. The ultimate goal was to move those athletes along the Colorado Springs at the Olympic Training Center. And part of my job was going to University World Championships, Cadet Pan Am Championships, Senior World Championships along the way and doing training camps all over the world. So I'd like to believe that some of that experience will help the program here at Lakeland University. And I, I think it will. And we've already started on that path uh, these last couple of weeks. Yep. Yeah, I had to go back to your the press release when we announced your uh, hire at Lakeland and you, by your count, you'd coached at 34 national championships, 12 international tournaments, four world champions, uh, one Pan American championship. That's that's uh, sounds like a lot of fun. That's a lot of great experience. So one of the other reasons why i, I kind of left the college scene for a little bit uh 2012 was my last experience coaching uh on the women's side in college i did do one year in 2017 on the men's side of the junior college right. lincoln college in illinois but one of the main reasons why i left was because of what you just spoke of there was so much travel going on in the beginning of my head coaching career i had little ones i had a one-year-old like a two and a half year old they're 20 months apart now they're 17 and 18 getting ready to be 18 and 19. so as they get on their journey to become young adults and go into college i figured why not have the same opportunity for me and to make a small story short when you're doing all that traveling in the teenage years for me when you have daughters then you miss out a lot you can't go to certain events yep. and but because my daughters are basically done with high school i thought it was the right opportunity for me to go back into the college ranks on the other side of it all of that traveling getting to see the world getting to educate myself about different cultures and different peoples and different styles of wrestling i think that's what it's all about uh in life and in general and here at lakeland there are already athletic programs that are doing the same sort of things that i was doing back in the day and from 2012 all the way back to 2004. So I'm, um, you know, when I did my interview, I was really excited to hear several of the coaches were already doing a lot of international experience because I think that can only help uh, the student athlete. And for women in women's wrestling, women's wrestling is the international style. Women's wrestling is freestyle. Women's wrestling is the Olympic style, which is different from the men. So why not take advantage of that opportunity? Yeah, um, and uh you've uh your experience in the sport we mentioned coaching um as a as a wrestler and um as a also an advocate uh and uh promoting and supporting the sport um i know you had a big part of the push to get uh women's r girls wrestling r recognized in the state of illinois and you've even written about the sport for websites how uh, how did you get started with that it, it goes all the way back to the beginning of my coaching career at the head coaching level. So I did assistantships probably in my 20s, like right after college. That was on the men's side, Division One, and at high school, my alma mater, Evanston Township High School, when I got the job. So I mentioned before, it was kind of a collaboration of sorts. Uh, the school was Northern Michigan University. I was employed by USA Wrestling, and we were under the umbrella of the United States Olympic Committee. So I was charged with you know, building that program. And, and, and in a nutshell, they basically gave me the keys and then I had to kind of figure everything out on my own. It was good and it was bad. It was bad because I didn't really know what the heck I was doing, but it was good because it taught me how to do press releases. It taught me how to write articles. I had to do everything for that program from writing the articles to setting up the trips, traveling internationally to being a guardian. So way back when in those days, that's where I started to really understand that um, if we're going to make this thing grow on the girls and women's wrestling, we've got to be, we have to be advocates ourselves because no one's going to do it for us. In fact, a lot of men, like I mentioned before, there are some men like me that are really into it, but they're, you know, they're pushing girls and female wrestling away. I think right now, as of today, there might be 28 or 29 that have uh, sanctioned high school girls wrestling. And I mentioned before, there's about 85 women's wrestling programs. Well, it's almost quadruple that if you go on the men's side. I think there are 48 or 49 states that have high school boys wrestling, and it's in the hundreds on the, the men's side from Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three, NAIA, and junior college. So we're we're behind the men in terms of yeah. numbers, but we're right on their heels in terms of success. Sure. Um, so, and then we're going to ask a little more about you. And you you mentioned you're from the Chicago area, and you have a family. Um, you wrestled collegiately at uh, Lock Haven University. Correct. 
Yeah, and that's out in Pennsylvania. You are uh, all American out there, correct? So yeah, I was uh, before that. Like I started wrestling as a high school freshman, as a fourteen-year-old. Sometimes right. student athletes are they're curious about how much success they can have. And I I was an Olympic champion, but I was able to win a state title in freestyle and Greco-Roman and in folk style. So those are the three major styles for high school students. In my my third year of wrestling, I was able to accomplish some of those goals. I, I went on to take second at junior nationals. And because of those uh, accomplishments, I was given the opportunity to have a full scholarship at Lock Haven University. Now, full scholarships are hard to come by these days because most programs are trying to build teams. But when I was wrestling, they, I think they were more in vogue, they were more in style. So my junior year, I actually took third in the NCAA. So that gave me all American status. And you know, my college wrestling career was bittersweet because I'm leading into my senior year thinking I have a shot at winning the national title because I had my previous year, but I ended up uh, tearing my ACL, uh, I think in November or December. So that kind of derailed some of my plans of being a national champion. Moving forward, I also trained at the Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs for two years after college. And that the end of my career was less than uh, ideal. I ended up tearing my other ACL and my other knee. So that was that kind of fast tracked uh -huh. into coaching. At the time, I think I was 27 or 28. So I started coaching at right around 28, 29. Yeah. Um, and then just a little bit more, we have a couple of grab bag questions for you. These are the questions we always tell our guests that uh, and those watching. We didn't brief the guest on these questions before, so they may be a couple small surprises, but they're pretty basic questions. So um, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Uh, a little. All right. Uh, what, what is your favorite food? Hmm. So every Friday, uh, and some people that are close to me know that every Friday I basically have pizza. Like it's like one of my favorite foods. I like all foods. Wrestlers are a little bit everywhere because we have to lose <laughs> weight all the time. So we always have these cravings. I no longer have the craving for pizza because I eat it every Friday. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite place to eat? Uh, preferably my home. Uh, but if you're talking about going out, I mean, I haven't been out in so long, like at a restaurant or anything like that. But <laughs> I like most Italian type of foods, although okay. I like hamburgers. I like fast food hamburgers and I like restaurant hamburgers. I also like gyros. I like all sorts of food, but those are two or three of my favorites. <laughs> in Chicago, like we have a large Latino and Hispanic population. So there's burritos all over the place. I love those too. So if I had to pick four or five, those would be my four four or five top <laughs> types of food and or restaurants. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, do you have a favorite sport other than wrestling? So wrestling is uh, actually my second love. When I was a boy, I did all <laughs> kinds of sports and to more about me and just, you know, I'm not the largest man in the world. I think right now I'm about 5'9", about 170. In college, I competed at 142. Internationally, sure. I competed about 152. When I was younger, that was smaller. My freshman year, I was 98 pounds. That goes to the question because when I was younger, I was competitive with all the younger boys because we were roughly the same size. As we started to move up to you know middle school and high school, turns out I didn't really grow that much. So my first love was actually baseball and you can be okay. small and, and play baseball and do well. But as soon as I started wrestling, I became much better in wrestling. As a yeah. fan, I like to watch uh, international sports and two of my favorite international sports at the moment are football or soccer, the international soccer is called football, and football. rugby. So rugby is the other form of football, and they don't wear equipment. So I guess yeah. you could say football, generally speaking, is one of my other favorite sports to watch as a fan. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then one more question. Um, and during this pandemic, is there anything you've spent a little more time doing that you get a chance to spend as much time on before, but you've had a little more time for now? So during the COVID break, previously I was employed by Homewood Flossmoor High School. And because like you mentioned, you know, we basically, class was just like this every day for the most part. Uh, and I, I spent the first five or six weeks this year actually employed there. And then I came here, I think in the fifth or sixth week of school. So there's a lot of downtime is what you're saying. So I spent a lot more time reading, reading books, probably seven or eight books I read over the span from COVID starting till actually now. And I'm reading another book right now and I'm like a uh, to write and I like to spend a lot of time on social media. So I upped my hours on that. By the way, Lakeland Women's Wrestling has a an Instagram page. So Instagram Lake 
uh, you know, our, our, our Instagram page, and then you would be able to uh, see that. I think it's Lakeland underscore women's underscore wrestling, and you can dial into that. We're putting stuff up. We have been putting stuff up, I'd say, for the last three weeks. Because we're getting ready to start training, we'll probably have something out, you know, every other day. So people can log into that uh, IG page and kind of see what we're doing from now until hopefully when we start competing, which looks like it could be January. Sure. All right. Um, sounds good. Well, thank you, Coach Gillespie, for joining us. Uh, we're looking forward to working with you and and watching the progress of the Lakeland Women's Wrestling Program under your guidance, too. So uh, thank you. Go Muskies. <laughs>